Hey everyone, Duke is here with a video to help you through the Crota Challenge Mode. I know there aren't any added mechanics to get down such as the supercharge mechanic in Wrath of the Machine. The challenge is completed basically the same way we always did this fight, except one sword runner can't carry the whole team. It has to be a different person picking up the sword every time. If you play it slow and safe, anyone can do it, so don't feel like you need to be carried or nervous that your teammates are going to screw up. With that being said, my team does this using only three swords but most, if not all teams, can definitely do this in four swords or less. That's beneficial because you avoid the second round of ogres, and if two teammates are uncomfortable running the sword, they don't have to. I'm going to start the video by giving you a breakdown of my recommended weapons, gear, and subclasses. Then I'll give a brief overview of the strategy, followed by a more detailed perspective from all positions. And of course, I'll be giving tips and best practices throughout the video. I want to make it clear that this video is not about dropping Crota as fast as possible or showing the most skilled way to take him out. You can be better than the strategy I'm going to recommend. It's not about that. It's about how the average team and average players can complete the challenge and play a significant role while doing so. So let's get into it. As I mentioned, we'll start with recommendations. And I want to emphasize that they are just recommendations. In other raids, it was very important to have certain subclasses. I can honestly say there are no crutch subclasses in this method, but there's preferred choices. So I recommend a Sunsinger, a Defender with Weapons of Light, and two Gunslingers with Celestial Nighthawk. The Sunsinger has a Raze Lighter, and the five remaining players run Galahorn. Everybody runs a Sniper. The Sunsinger will be one of the Sword Bearers, and any of the remaining players can be the other Sword Bearers. These choices are going to make a little more sense as the video progresses. So then we'll quickly talk basic strategy too. The entire engagement is about coordination. If everyone's on the same page and knows each step of the plan, you're going to have a painless run. For a smooth encounter, you don't need to be a hero and get a ton of damage. Crota goes down after 16 heavy slams with the sword. So of the three designated players, two need to get five hits and one needs to get six. Or if four people are running the sword, they need four hits each, which I'm about to show you is very easy to do. There are other combos and even a super you can use with the sword. We prefer just using R2 attacks because they're easy to count. Always knowing exactly how much damage was dealt helps you decide when to finish Crota off, which I'll cover at the end of the video. So getting into the play-by-play, -play, it obviously starts with taking out the sword bearer. I recommended one player to have a raised lighter in their heavy weapon slot, preferably the Sunsinger because of self-res. We send the Sunsinger in to get the first sword. The sword bearer doesn't spawn until somebody leaves the crystal room. So the first player to leave should be the sword runner so they can meet the sword bearer at the door, which is why you see my team follow me out. It takes just over two uppercuts to drop the sword bearer. If you use a grenade, two uppercuts is more than enough. As soon as I drop him, I take the sword and I head to the perch on the left. When I get to this point, I start my countdown at three. You should be landing on this perch when you say one and then on your way up when you say go. Look how close I get to Crota while he's standing. If you're inexperienced, you might get a little anxious about being this close. The reason I'm able to do this without worrying is because I understand what it takes to make Crota kneel. Four Galahorn rockets drop Crota immediately. So look at this clip. You can see that no one does any damage to Crota except for the four rockets that go flying in. So when I said you should be on your way up by the time you say go, that's because as soon as you give your team the green light to hit Crota, he'll be down in the time it takes one rocket to travel to him from where your team's standing. So as long as you trust your team to hit a stationary target with a tracking rocket launcher, you can get in Crota's face as soon as you give him the green light. Continuing on, I trust my teammates to hit their rockets. I'm showing you a clip where I hit Crota four times in one down, so you know that three hits is attainable for most players and two hits is very easy. As soon as Crota starts glowing orange or starts to get up, he's immune to damage and can't be down for about four seconds, give or take. As soon as you get your hits in, turn around and go back to the perch. As you're leaving, count down your time again. The idea is to have your team fire their rockets shortly after he's vulnerable again. So just like before, jump up as you're saying go. Get the hits you need for the second time and get out. I'll play this clip with game audio so you can get a real time feel for it instead of just the theory. Three, two, one, hit him. Three, Two, one, hit him. Let's talk about what the DPS team is doing during this time. They follow the first sword runner outside. My team chooses to go at the left door because Crota's first rotation is to the right, 
So in the event that your team falls behind on time, there's less risk of Crota coming right at you when he moves. If the player with a raise lighter is running sword, the other five players all have Gallahorn equipped. Only four of those five players need to fire a rocket at Crota. The fifth player can worry about taking out the knight and wizard. Players shooting rockets have a little bit of time to help control hive enemies in between rocket shots, as you see me take a shot at this wizard. You only need to take out the knights on the side that your sword runner is approaching from, because the opposite side knights don't attack. So the sword runner calls the countdown, four players fire rockets, and the last player contains the knight and wizard. The sword runner gets their hits in, Crota stands up, and then the oversoul summons. Ignore the oversoul for now. Let the sword runner count down again. When you get the green light, fire another rocket to down Crota a second time. As soon as you fire that second rocket, then you pull out your sniper and go to work on the oversoul. That's the strategy that any team can use. To make things easier, my team had a weapons of light bubble to get that extra damage for the oversoul, which makes a huge difference. To make this even easier than that, one shot from a Celestial Nighthawk Golden Gun with Over the Horizon and Deadeye takes the Oversoul out, as you're seeing here. If you have two Gunslingers running that setup, like I recommended, they can just alternate who's responsible for soloing the Oversoul. Just be careful about taking it out too early, or else the second one will spawn. You can wait until the last second, since it's a one-shot kill. For the second sword, we go to the right side, since Crota will break left in his next rotation. We wait for him to finish going right, and then back to middle before we leave the Crystal Room again. We send the Raze Lighter player in to take out the Sword Bearer. You don't have to do that, you can team kill it, or the next Sword Runner can just solo it with rockets. Either way, the second Sword Runner picks up the sword and goes to the right side perch. They count down their jump. There should be four players with Gallahorns ready to shoot on command. Since the player with Raze Lighter can't shoot a rocket, they can prioritize taking out the Knight and Wizard if the rest of the team hasn't already. Crota goes down, the Sword Runner gets their hits in, they back away and restart the countdown, rockets come in again, Crota goes down, the Sword Runner gets a second round of hits in, and the rest of the team takes care of the Oversoul. After every second sword, you have to fight Ogres. We stay on the right side for this phase, simply because we're already there. Have someone focus on the Thrall on the bridge, and have someone focus on the Hive enemies in the tower. Other than that, the Ogres can basically be killed right outside of the door they come from. At this time, Crota's on the left, so he's not really a risk for hitting you unless you push up a little too far. Once the Ogres are dead, make sure Crota goes back to mid. For the third sword, you can repeat exactly what I recommended for the second sword. If you need a fourth sword, that's no problem at all. Just be careful you don't enrage Crota. He enrages at about 15% health, which immediately spawns an Oversoul. This Oversoul disappears when Crota dies, so there's no need to worry about it. You don't want to enrage Crota unless you're sure you can finish him with that sword, because the Oversouls will continuously spawn and basically guarantees a wipe. 13 R2 attacks cause Crota to enrage, and it takes 16 to kill him. If you know your first sword runner hit him for 6, and your second hit him for 5, Crota's been hit 11 times, so you know you need 5 more. If you think you can get 5 as the third sword runner, go for it, because that makes 16. If not, you can only hit him once, because 2 more makes 13, and that'll cause him to enrage, like I mentioned. You can make this decision as a team while you take out Ogres, if you know how much damage was dealt to Crota, which is why I recommend only using heavy attacks, even though there are other combos. If you just use heavy attacks, you know how many you have, and you know how many you need, so you can make that decision. Guys, that's it for the video. I won't do a summary because I think we went into some pretty deep detail, and the video is already running kind of long. If you learned something or found this video useful, make sure to like it and share it with a friend. Also, definitely subscribe as I'll be releasing more challenge guides. I'll see you guys then. Duking us out.